The beauty of Upper Michigan is showcased in the state's northernmost location, the Keweenaw Peninsula, better known as the Copper Country. Well, it's beautiful scenery. I, I, the uh, Keweenaw Peninsula of Michigan is just awesome in terms of uh, you know, trees and hills and, and uh, you know, almost mountainous looking, carved out by the glacier. And uh, the topography is interesting, and especially water-wise, because you can be going along and all of a sudden, you know, you're in, you might be in six feet of water and all of a sudden you're back in 25, 30 feet of water. So it's just, it's just amazing. It may be picturesque, but it's also dangerous. Underwater, there are rocky reefs that have snagged dozens of ships over the years. And one wasn't that long ago. It was here that the Coast Guard Cutter Mesquite stranded while picking up the buoy that marked this dangerous spot. There is current in that particular area that's different than anywhere else in the lake. Uh, <clears throat> they just didn't know. Inexperience was one of the reasons blamed for the grounding, but many of those who looked into the accident didn't feel the ship should have been lost. The crew on that ship did their jobs. If it had been the crew's responsibility, that ship would still be safe. I'm critical of the officers, I'm critical of the captain and especially the engineer. Uh, it was his responsibility to set up damage control central, he didn't do that. The crews that were manning the pumps and setting up the perimeters and, and uh, <clears throat> had the chance to save the ship, they should not feel guilty. The ship's not going to sink, it's a ground can't sink. Uh, I guess the tragedies of that were the crew's feelings of guilt, uh, the officer of the deck, the young lady who uh, was told that she was qualified to be the OD who, but was left on the bridge unqualified. I mean she was qualified in Lake Michigan but she had never really been qualified in Lake Superior. And Lake Superior is a different breed of cat than Lake Michigan. It turned into a pretty good story about how it went aground and why it went aground and what happened to the, the captain of the ship at the time after it had gone aground. They left it on the rocks all winter and the waves and the ice pounded it up pretty good. So that's why they, I imagine they could have backed it off if they would have, would have wanted to, you know, and, and probably salvaged the wreck, but for some reason they decided not to do that. And they, like I said, they donated the United Water Preserve, which we're thankful for because it does make a very excellent dive. Lake Superior ripped apart any chances of recovery, and a decision was made to make something positive out of the wreck. It was sunk in deep water with nearly everything on board. When I put the mesquite on the bottom, we left everything on board, milk, jugs, tools, boom box, boom box yep. watches, you know, everything that, was, that the crew didn't take off of that ship from down below is still aboard. And the divers, uh, you know, if we assume that every diver that goes down is a crook, that he's gonna steal a piece, and that's what it is. If you're stealing, taking something from a shipwreck, uh, it's not yours. Uh, but we left it down there for the divers to look at. Uh, we automatically assume that the people that are diving, uh, number one, will police themselves, are honest people, that the, the operators of the diving platforms are honest people and won't allow it, and that, you know, in Michigan it's a law. You will not take anything from a wreck. They cut the superstructure off because it is considered a penetration dive. People do do penetration work on it. The superstructure was confined space. So they, they took that off, they sunk it in a totally different spot because they didn't want people doing confined work, you know, confined space work on a, on a dive where they might get hung up inside of it and have trouble. Today it's the most visited wreck in the Keweenaw Preserve. Lake Superior's clear waters make it a one-of-a-kind dive. Many wrecks in the other lakes are covered with zebra mussels, but when you get up into cold waters of Lake Superior, it, you, you just have, you see everything. You know, you don't have to worry about clams, you don't have to worry about cutting your hands on anything. Um, that particular vessel with all the Coast Guard history and everything behind it, knowing that history going into it, it was neat. It really was because you can see everything and all the books say that they left everything there and it's there. The trade-off for this incredible view is the temperature. 
the unfortunate part was that it's cold. So as divers, we have to uh, take precautions and that means putting on more layers. The water is great, it's a little cold, but they claim cold water divers are excellent divers, so that's a lot of the reason people come up to dive in Lake Superior is to get the recognition of being a cold water diver. Divers have stolen some of the artifacts that were down here, but many things lie just as they were when the ship was scuttled. The stern of the ship has lost its name though. Just the M, which is kind of sad, but that usually comes from divers or other people, you know, people rubbing their hands over it. One of those unfortunate things that happens to wrecks when divers get on them. Locals say the ship's Coast Guard insignia was covered up prior to the sinking, but hints of it are just peeking through. They tried to paint the, the Coast Guard emblem off of it. Well, I've noticed on recent dives that the paint that they covered up the Coast Guard emblem is now peeling off the Coast Guard emblem and the emblem is starting to show again. So that's going to be a, quite a shock to them, I guess, when they hear that. <laughs> Traveling to the Copper Country does take some time, and Ron recommends a day trip to soak it all in. It's remote. You know, it takes a long time to get up there, traveling up the Keweenaw Peninsula. And, but I think it's, it, it's worth the trip, first of all, because of all the beautiful scenery and everything. And it's unfortunate, our trip, we did some of it at night, the driving at night, so I didn't get to see as much of it. But um, I think it, it, it'd be worth the while for anybody, even just a tourist going up there, it'd be worth it. 